Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and to a new video. Today we are going to look at the Arch install script which comes already pre-installed in the Arch ISO. I already looked at this script several months ago and this is gonna be take two. So without too much talking, let's jump into the video. So here we are, we booted up the virtual machine with the Arch ISO for December 2021. Now in this video, as I said in the intro, I'm just going to show you very quickly how you can use the Arch install script, which is already coming with the ISO to quickly install Arch if you don't want to go through the manual installation. Now Linux is about choice. I'm not saying here that you have to use this script or that it's better if you use this script. It's just an option that it's there and it has been there now for a couple of months and this is kind of a take two for me with this script because I haven't used it that much but in my tests here I found actually that it's pretty effective if you want to install Arch very quickly with a few options. Now just keep in mind here that you will not have the full range of options that you would have normally when you would install Arch manually. Especially if you want to use the BadRFS file system and with multiple sub-volumes, definitely I recommend you to do this manually because with this installer you will not be able to do this. Now let's go ahead and see what we can do with this installer. So the first thing actually let me type in, in here set font tur-132n to increase the font size so you can see better. Now, before starting the installer, I would recommend you to make sure that you have an internet connection. So to do this, you can type in IP space A, and you can see there I have only one interface in this machine, which is ENP 1S0. This is an internet interface. I have an IP there ending with 138. So I have an IP here, and if you're using Wi-Fi, you'll need to connect to it. Otherwise, the Arch install script, you will not be able to download packages from the repositories. So if you have Wi-Fi, you will have a Wi-Fi adapter listed here and you can connect to your Wi-Fi by typing in IWCTL to use the IWD utility. Now here you will type in usually station and then the name of your Wi-Fi adapter. It could be anything depending on your machine. I will type in, in here, for example, WLAN0 if that's the name and then connect and then the name of your network. So something like EFTech5, for example, this is the name of my Wi-Fi here. Then once you hit enter, you will be asked for the passphrase and you will be back then to the IWD prompt. You can type in here exit and you will be back to the Arch ISO. Now let's type in again IP space A, just make sure you have an IP and then we can just type in Arch install to start the script. Now, this is a Python script. You can see it checked for the repositories, so repositories are available. Now, this is a list of keyboards you can choose from. Now, mine, for example, it's not in this list. So how can we search for this? Well, it stands here in the prompt. You can enter the question mark or help. So I'm going to type in here help and I'm going to search for a string. So the string I'm looking for is DE and then hit enter and it shows you basically all of the keyboards available here having a DE in the string. So the one I am looking for is the number six. That's the Swiss keyboard I have. So I'm going to hit the number six here and then hit enter. Now you will need to select your country. Uh, this is of course personal. So in my case is 59 because I live right now in Switzerland. And now you will need to select the block device you want to use to install your machine. Now I have only one disk here, which is called VDA. You can see it is device number two. So I'm gonna select here number two and hit enter. Now here comes the question whether you want to actually wipe the whole drive and use a best effort default partition layout, or you wanna select the option number one there, which is select what to do with each individual drive. Now this is really up to you here. In my testing, actually, if you want to install very quickly Arch and if you don't have any specific needs to partition your drive, go for the option number zero there. It's the fastest one and the safest one. If you require a special partitioning with specific sizes, then you will go into option number one. However, let me say here, if you want to use the BadRFS file system, for example, then you're better off installing this manually without this script because you're not going to be able to create multiples of volumes here, whether you're using option number zero or option number one. In my testing, it's very effective if you're using the ext4 file system. And unless you have specific needs to create partitions with a specific size, I definitely recommend you to go with the option number zero there, which is going to create the layout for you. 
So I'm gonna select it here and type zero and hit enter. Here you can select your pile system. Now, again, if you wanna use ButterFS, in my opinion, you are better off installing Arch manually because ButterFS has a lot of options and a lot of possibilities that you are not going to be able to configure here in this installer. So you can choose XFS or the XT4 or the F2FS file system. In my case, I'm gonna go with EXT4 here, so option number one. Now you can choose to have encryption. So let's try this out. I'm gonna encrypt here the drive. So I'm gonna type in my password and retype it. And now it's asking me whether I want to use Grab as a bootloader. I'm gonna choose systemd boot here. It's the default. So I'm just gonna accept the defaults here by hitting enter. Now, would you like to use swap on ZRAM? Definitely, because it's a good option and it's not gonna create a swap partition for you anyway, this installer. So ZRAM here is the way to go. Now, desired host name for the installation, I'm gonna go here very simply with Arch. This is gonna be the num with Arch. This is gonna be the name of my machine. Now, enter the root password. Now, as you can see here, leave blank to disable root and create super user. So this is kind of a Debian approach. If you don't enter the root password here, you will be asked to create a user and this user will have automatically pseudo privileges. Now, this is really up to you. Although if you create the root password here, you will have to create a user for the system manually. So I will do this. So I'm gonna type in the root password here because I like to have the root user. Need to verify my password. And you can see here, it didn't ask me to create any user. I'll have to do it at the end of the installation. Now here you can choose the profile of your installation. If you wanna have a desktop environment, so if you wanna have just a base install and then customize the desktop environment or the window manager yourself, go for option number one. The server option provides a selection of various server packages to install and enable. So if you wanna use Arch as a server, definitely choose option number two. And we have also the third option here, the XORG option. Install a minimal system as well as XORG and graphic drivers. Now, this is really up to you here because if you want to install the desktop profile, it's going to install also XORG nevertheless with graphic drivers. So I'm going to choose for this video the option number zero for a desktop here and select it. And here we are asked to select some desktop environments or some window managers. Now for this video, I'm gonna go with XFC, which is a very light desktop environment. So I'm gonna select the option number 11 here and then hit enter. And here you can see here, it's going to ask me my graphic driver. Now, if you wanna install, for example, all open source drivers here, you can just leave blank and accept the default. Or if you have a specific card that you want to use, you can type in the option that fits for you. In my case here, I'm gonna go with blank because I'm on a virtual machine. Here you're asked also whether you wanna use Pipewire or Pulse Audio as your audio server. So this is really up to you here. I'm gonna go with Pulse Audio in my case. Again, this is personal preference. And now you can choose also which kernel or kernels you want to install. Right now you can see the Linux kernel is the default one. It's the one which has the two arrows here already selected but you can select also multiple kernels. Although in my case, the Linux kernel is fine. So I'm just gonna select the default here by hitting enter. And now we can also install some extra packages like for example, some browser, let's say. So let's say I'm gonna install Firefox here. You can select of course another package if you wanna install it and then hit enter. You can select also multiple packages separated by the space. And when you're done, you can just hit enter. Now here uh, you can select one network interface to configure. Now, if you're installing a desktop environment, chances are you wanna use network manager because it's probably going to be needed nevertheless. So I'm gonna use here the option number one and then hit enter. Now we need to select a valid time zone. This is of course, depending on, on where you are. So in my case is Europe and the city for Switzerland is Zurich and then hit enter. And would you like to use automatic time synchronization? Definitely yes, so I'm just gonna accept the default here. And here we have a summary of all the options we have. You can see there a few things is we are creating a 513 megabytes partition for the UFI partition, the EFI partition. We have a 20 gigabyte root partition and the rest is going to be the home partition. You can see how it's partitioned there. If you choose the manual option, you will have to go through basically all these steps manually. 
So you will basically have to choose the size of the partitions you want. So for the EFI partition, the root partition and the home partition, you can see, for example, where it says start on the EFI partition on top of the screen. This is where the partition is starting. So it's starting at five megabytes of space on the drive and it's 513 megabytes in size. The second partition there, the root partition starts at 518 and it's finishing at 20 gigabytes. And the home partition, it's gonna start at 20.5 gigabytes and it's gonna basically use the rest of the space. So if you're choosing the manual partitioning, this is how you will have to partition this with the script. Once you're done here, you can just hit enter so this is basically doing everything, partitioning the disk, formatting, mounting, installing all the necessary packages. So depending also on the desktop environment and if you have encryption, like in my case here, it's gonna take some time. So I'm gonna stop the video here, guys, and I'll be back with you once the installation is done. So here we go. The information says now that the packages have been installed and it's asking me if I would like to truth in into the installation and perform post installation configuration. I would say yes, because I want to create a new user for the system. So let me clean up the terminal. Let me type in user add dash M and then my username here, the M switch stands for the home directory. I'm going to create a password for the user. So pass WD and then the username and enter a new password and retype it. And the user is created. Now I want to give also this user pseudo privileges. So I'm going to type in editor equal Vim and then vice pseudo. Vim was installed because I installed also XFCE. So it should have come actually already with and we scroll down here with control F and we just make sure that the first will group here is uncommented so that when the user will boot up, it will have pseudo privileges. Then I'm going to save this file and exit Vim with colon X and clean up the terminal. And now we can type in, in here exit to go back to the root ISO. And you can see the installation completed without any error. So we can now reboot. So let's test this up. Let's reboot our machine. So here we have system boot. It looks fine. So we can just accept the default here and we should be asked for the password because the installation is encrypted. As you can see, it worked fine. So let's enter the password here. And if everything went well, we should be greeted by the light DM display manager, which was installed uh, by default here with XFCE. And here we have light DM. So let me enter my password. And we are now in XFC. The first thing, let me change here the display resolution. So I go to settings, display, and change this to 1080p and click apply. Keep the configuration and we are in XFC. We install this with the Arch install script in the Arch ISO. So let's open up the terminal here and type in free dash H. You can see we are using 421 megabytes of space and with LSBLK, you can see there we created the script created for us the boot partition, the EFI partition, which is about 500 megabytes in size. We have an encrypted root partition here of approximately 18 gigabytes and the home partition is about 31 gigabytes. Also, if we check the cryptab file, let's type in cat slash Etsy slash cryptab and hit enter. We have there also the crypt device for the home partition. This is basically there so that we are not asked twice for a password when we boot the machine. This is basically going to change the encryption for the home directory every time we boot the machine automatically. We just need the password for the root partition when it boot up, but not for the home partition. So this is another way to install Arch using the Arch install script coming in the Arch ISO. Now the script, as it says also in the Arch wiki, is still experimental. So you can expect there are a couple of errors. I encountered some errors when I tried to partition the disk manually during the installation. But if you're using the automated way, it should work most of the time out of the box just fine. Just as I said before, if you want to use the BadRFS file system, you are better off actually doing this manually or using maybe another installer with more options. But again, Linux is about choice. I'm not saying here that this is the best way to install Arch. This is one way you can install Arch. And if you are in a hurry and you want to do it manually, this is also one way you can do it. 
But again, as everything else, it's always a matter of personal preference. So this was the Arch install script, which comes already pre-installed in the Arch ISO. As I said in the video, this is one way to install Arch. Linux is about choice. I'm not saying it's the best way or that it's the only way. It's one way possible to install Arch. Now the manual way, it's the best way if you want to configure the system to fit your needs, especially if you want to use the BadRefs file system. But if you are in a hurry and you want to install Arch with the XT4, the Arch install script will help you out here in no time. If you know some more things about the Arch install script that you would like to share with the community, let me also know in the comments below and I will try also to answer you as soon as I can. Thank you so much for watching the video guys, I'll see you very soon in the next one.